Hi guys and welcome to Pro 2 Studios. So we're here today tracking drums on a new song and we have the very accomplished session drummer Andy Mapp who has kindly agreed to uh, be part of this video. Now the purpose of this video is to show us tracking through slave computers which enables us to harness the processing power of extra computers while recording as well as mixing. Now we use three slaves and one master. The master being Pro Tools HD on Mac OS and all the slaves are running Sequoia on Windows 10. So I suppose the big question is, why? Why do we need to go to such complex lengths just to record some drums or a band or an orchestra or whatever it may be? Well, the answer for me is, and this is why I've done this for almost 15 years, is basically I want to hear as close to the finished product as possible right from the get-go. So I want to be able to monitor all the processing that I usually do at the mixing stage, but right from the beginning. Uh, I mainly now use Acoustica audio plugins, uh, as well as a lot of outboard hardware. And these plugins sound fantastic, but also you use a huge amount of processing power. Uh, now between the three slaves, I think we've done tests and so we can run about 240 Acoustica plugins. And this is impossible on just one system. Now the main challenge when tracking through slaves is to maintain zero latency for the musicians but still monitor in real time all these high powered plugins which require such hefty buffer sizes and large delay compensation values. Uh, and this is achieved by how we configure the master. Oh, and just to mention, uh, we are just monitoring these plugins so we can still make changes at a later stage if we require. Uh, now we can track uh, up to 48 channels in real time uh, and introduce hardware and maintain sample accuracy. So let's start to record and then we'll go through exactly what we are using. Uh, so we've got here some keyboards uh, recorded as a guide and we'll be recording the drums to this guide track. Okay, here we go. Okay, that sounds cool, mate. Um, so I suppose uh, the first question for you, Andy, is can you hear any latency or delay? No, no, no. None whatsoever. So it's exactly as we would normally record as if we weren't going through the slaves. Fantastic, okay. So, okay, well, let's make a, another recording now and then I'll show you some of the processing that we're actually doing. Okay, here we go again, Andy. Well done mate, sounds cool. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the processing that we've got. So we've basically got 14 channels of drums, all the usuals, kick, snare, overheads, rooms, etc, etc. Uh, and I'm also using some parallel chains on these drums. And this also happens in real time. And I've got a, an outboard um, DBX compressor and parallel. Um, I've also got what we've got here, I think we've got an acoustic one here. Yeah, we've got line there, that's also on the parallel. And we've also got a distressor. And we've got some reverbs here, a uh, mangled verb, which is a, a plug-in by Eventide, which is that one, which is cool. I'm using some outboard reverbs. Uh, one is a, 
uh, Lexicon PCM96 and I'm also using the AMS RMX16. Uh, there's a couple of more reverbs on the drums there for this type of track. And I'm also using an outboard transient designer. And, and this all happens in real time, like I've just said. So as well as that, also on parallel, we have some tape emulators. And again, these are Acoustica audio ones. I'm using three here. Uh, one's on the B3 setting there. Uh, there's another one on C5. And then there's another one on the D2. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll make another recording and I'm going to turn on and off the parallel um, tape uh, saturators so you can just hear that. Okay, Andy, here we go again. Cool, mate. That was quite a good take, actually. <laughs> Might use that one. <laughs> okay, so as you can hear, the uh, tape emulators uh, are also on parallel. Make quite a huge difference to the uh, Acoustica tape emulators, the way I record drums. Um, so what we'll do now is that we'll do another recording and I'll turn off some of the parallel compressors uh, so you can see what they're doing as well. And like I say, and which I'll, I'll keep saying, this is all done in real time. Okay, Andy, here we go for another one. Well done, mate. So while we're here, um, let's just have a look at some of the uh, plugins that we're using. On the kick drum, we have a sand channel strip with everything engaged in in same mode and the uh, FET rose. Um, on the snare, again, I have a sand channel strip. Um, I've got the FET rows again there and I'm using three instances of the Alex B TLA Audio EQ. I use uh, the top one there, the mid one there and the low one there. There we are. Cool. On the Hyatt's, which is channel three, again I have the sand channel strip. and. On the Hyatt's, um, I like um, Amethyst with uh, some nice shiny 10k EQ on the Hyatt's. Um, the snare bottom, why isn't my mouse working? It is. Um, we've got uh, another sand there. And on the rooms, we have the FET rose again. Um, and also the sand channel strip. And on the overheads, uh, which is seven and eight. Again, sand channel strip. You can see all the EQs there engaged, plus a few dB, 8K, minus 8 dB, around 2K, and a dip at around 300. Um, compressor, no, I'm not compressing on that one. 
Uh, the Toms, again, sand channel strip. And I've got purple uh, on the Toms. Quite a bit of EQ there. Um, the same for the next Tom channel. It'll be the same thing, which is cool. And the same for number 12. What do we have on number 12? That was the right symbol, which will just be a sand. Yeah, it is. And then we have the kick two, and then the snare two. On 13, I think it is. Let me just have a look. Uh huh. Okay. And then while we're here, um, I might as well explain. Um, this is basically my template for tracking. So moving across to the other side um, on the base, um, I usually have a sand channel strip and I have a crimson and a fet rose again and a pink 2 EQ. Obviously we didn't record any bass today so I haven't set any of these. This is just my template. On guitars, I usually have again the sand channel strip in the same mode again, and I usually put some um, pink on the guitars. Same again on this one, we have pink for guitars. More sand channel strips for keyboards and horns and everything else. And on the vocals, um, I'll have my sand channel strip again with a bit, bit of EQ going on there. Um, I've got amber. Uh, which I like on vocals, both male and female. And you can see the settings there that I usually have as a starting position. And I also have a gold compressor on the vocals. Uh, but if you notice, there is compressing a heck of a lot with the threshold down, but I'm only using about 10% of that. So it's acting a bit like a, a parallel compressor. Um, another vocal channel here with more sands, more ambers, more golds. Uh, ebony, uh, I usually use the ebony reverb as well when I'm tracking through slaves. And again, more sands. So the way I basically do it is I start with 48 sands and then add certain EQs on top of that, uh, depending on what I uh, require. And that's my standard template for when I'm recording a band and when the band comes in, I then tweak some of these to suit the band and the song. So then I'm basically listening to more or less the finished thing of 70, 80, 90% of how the record's gonna sound in the end. Okay. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do now is that I'd like to just have a listen to the room sound um, as we're recording, because I can actually listen and solo to all the plugins that I'm monitoring, but it doesn't actually stop the recording. It doesn't stop what Andy is hearing in his headphones. Okay, so let's make another recording, Andy. Here we go. Well done mate, sounds cool again. Now as you can hear, those room sounds sound amazing and let's have a look what we've got on them actually. So we have on five and six, we've got a, a sand full channel strip again. I use sand on basically every single channel on all 48 channels, we've got a sand channel strip in insane mode. So that is that one that's on the rooms. So um, what is doing the pumping? And again, it is the FET Rose compressor. That one sounds absolutely stunning to my ears. Um, I've got distressors, I've got, uh, I've got uh, outboard 1176s. And for me, 
this fat rose compressor does exactly what I want. I'm not saying it's better or worse than the outboard stuff, but it just does exactly what I am after. Okay, so that's that. Right, moving on to what moving on to next. Okay, so we can still do drop-ins um, while we're recording. And so see if we can set this up. Just need to move that. So basically, Andy, what we'll do is <clears throat> we shall do a drop-in of the very, very last cymbal crash. Yeah? So you can play along beforehand. Um, am I on there? Four bars. <clears throat> that camera's just stopped, but it doesn't matter. We'll continue. Okay, so you're going to hear that last fill, and you're just going to play that last cymbal crash, yeah? You're going to hear one, two, three, four bars, depending how you're counting it. Okay, here we go. Okay, that was fantastic. It did have a little glitch, but that's because I actually put <coughs> the dropping point before he actually should hit the kick drum. So I've got plenty of space left. So if I bring that back to there and press play again, that dropping should be complete. Perfect. Okay, so. What we're going to try and do now is we're going to do something in loop record. In fact, I'm going to go to a different part of the song and we'll just set up a four bar loop. Okay, so we'll just do them depending on how you're counting it. Depends if it's two or four bars. And we need to be in loop record, which we are. So it's going to go on a four bar loop, Andy. You'll probably miss it first go around, uh, but just pick it up and it'll just go around and round and round. Okay, here we go. Thanks Andy. So as you can see we can still record via the slaves still in loop mode and all them takes will be in our audio pool so that we can actually um, audition them later. So the slaves, the fact that we are running slaves to record with, it doesn't stop us in any way how we normally record but it does mean that I can monitor all this um, power hungry processing from things like acoustic or audio in real time but still maintain zero latency for the musicians that are actually recording. Now we're just recording drums today but it could be we could have a full band we could have the drums we could have the bass the guitar the keyboards singers horns whatever we're going to record it makes no difference it's exactly the same way and we can do up to sorry we can record up to 48 channels that's cool okay Andy I think you can take a break for a second so there we have it uh, and sorry what was that okay um, right so I've just been reliably informed um, that we're not actually recording the second part today. Now in the second part, this is the main bit that you probably want to see. And this will, will be uh, me basically showing how these systems are configured so that you can record through slave computers. Um, so, and that's the main bit. So we're not actually doing that 
today. Okay, so right, the reason for this is, is that uh, this is quite a, a unique thing that we're doing here. And basically we don't know if there is an interest um, for people to know how to do this. Um, so I think we're going to put the first video out, is that correct? Yes, we're going to put the first video out. So if you see that video, uh, please like the video, uh, please subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment in the comment section saying that you would like to see how this is all configured and how this works. And then I suppose if we get enough response, then we'll be doing that second video. Okay. All right then. So bye for now.